Good afternoon. Thank you, Carter, for leading us through a fantastic day this afternoon, uh, and to the Greater Baltimore Committee for hosting us today and doing what you do so well, bringing leaders together around a bold agenda to do big things for Baltimore. We are so grateful for all of your leadership. I know many of you here were at Select USA this week. Thank you for helping make this 10th Select USA an historic one. This was the largest investment summit to date, record levels of attendance and engagement, over 5,000 attendees, 96 international markets represented, and all 56 states and territories uh, participated as well. We are thrilled with Select USA, and I hope you all are as well. I also want to acknowledge our fellow speakers and the institutions that they represent because they have such a deep commitment to Baltimore and they have all been part of this city's renaissance, not only on their own, but also working collaboratively through durable partnerships between the public and private sectors, a theme that we've heard so much about today. And together, you are shaping a new and dynamic chapter in the long and storied history of Baltimore. Thank you for all that you do. And so it's a privilege and a pleasure to be here to talk about the Biden-Harris administration's deep commitment to Baltimore, the state of Maryland, and the partnership that we have built together. And when we talk about partnership, there is no greater example that I can think of than the ongoing work to respond to the collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge here in Baltimore. We've obviously heard uh, so much about that today, Jonathan, thank you for your leadership and sharing the experiences that you've had really on the front lines of this from day one and for so many others on the way that you have responded here. Since the earliest moments of that tragic day on March 26th, President Biden directed his team to move heaven and earth, to reopen, um, uh, to respond to the immediate crisis, reopen the, the port and rebuild the bridge as soon as humanly possible. And not only was a critical piece of infrastructure lost, but as we've heard, more than 20,000 jobs directly re rely on the port, and six families tragically lost their loved ones. And so the president has been clear that his administration would make sure that Baltimore had everything it needed to fully recover. And thanks to a remarkable effort across federal, state, and local government, the private sector, civil society, the channel is cleared, and the port of Baltimore is operating at full capacity, all in less than 100 days. Under the president's leadership, the whole of government effort has been a close collaboration between Governor Moore, Mayor Scott, County Executive Olszewski, the congressional delegation, and so many more. On that very first day, the United States Coast Guard stood up a unified command, bringing together the best experts and resources from federal, state, and local government once again to support rescue recovery and working to reopen the channel and safely restore maritime traffic. The Army Corps engineers, working with the US Navy and its partners, led a highly complex operation to remove 50,000 tons of steel and concrete, opening a series of channels to allow ships to return to the port and safety was a top priority, and they did this all without injuries. The Department of Labor and the Small Business Administration sprung to action, activated their resources quickly to support workers and small businesses impacted by the bridge collapse. And supporting labor and workers is always a top priority for the, for the president, and from day one, he was focused on how we can support workers, businesses, and the community. The Department of Transportation worked with East Coast ports, shippers, major companies, and other industry partners to minimize supply chain disruptions. We heard so much about this from Jonathan earlier. And the Department of Transportation uh, released emergency funding within hours of the request from the state and are continuing to work very closely with the state of Maryland on the process of rebuilding the bridge. Taken together, this represents government at its finest, an example of the remarkable things we can accomplish when we work together. I'd also like to give a special acknowledgement to the Greater Baltimore Committee. The work that you have led to organize the business community's support and response after this tragic incident has been essential and irreplaceable. Thank you to the entire GBC team and to the business community of Baltimore as a whole for the way that you have stepped up since day one. We could not have done it without you. Thank you. We know the job is not done, and as the president said, we will stand with the people of Baltimore and Maryland 
until the bridge is rebuilt. But beyond our commitment uh, to rebuild the Francis Scott Key Bridge and support Baltimore's recovery, as you've heard, there are an incredible range of additional investments that we are making here in the Baltimore region and across the state. And every one of them is defined by a robust partnership between the public and private sectors. To date, the Biden-Harris administration has made $13 billion in public investments in infrastructure, manufacturing, clean energy, and more across the state of Maryland. Here in the Baltimore region, we're investing in critical infrastructure like the Frederick Douglass Tunnel that Luigi uh, told us about, a project that will generate 30,000 good jobs, address one of the largest rail bottlenecks in the country, and improve reliability, safety, and commute times throughout the region. To support this generational infrastructure investment and many other projects, the Biden-Harris administration selected Baltimore as one of the nation's inaugural workforce hubs. We're partnering with local officials, employers, unions, and other stakeholders to ensure there's a skilled workforce ready to meet the demand for labor that is driven by these historic public and private investments. And this hub is led by a partnership of the Mayor's Office, the Baltimore Workforce Funders Collaborative, and the Baltimore DC Building Trades Union. We've also heard today about how a consortium led by our hosts, the Greater Baltimore Committee, uh, was designated a tech hub by the Economic Development Administration. The tech hub program is part of the Chips and Science Act, and it invests directly in high potential US regions to transform those regions into globally competitive innovation centers. And so designation as a tech hub is really an endorsement of the region's strategy to supercharge their industries and to create jobs and strengthen US economic and national security. We really look forward to seeing all the fantastic work that will come from the Baltimore Tech Hub. And I think about the uh, conversation we had about the BWI uh, concourse project. We recently awarded $52 million from the US Department of Transportation to support that project. So much of what you're seeing happening here in the Baltimore region, these are efforts that we in the Biden-Harris administration are so proud to be able to support, accelerate, and supercharge with investments to help the leaders of Baltimore and the community of Baltimore uh, and its region deliver on their priorities. And so these are a few of the many, many investments that we are making in the area. Here in Baltimore, you can see firsthand how innovative private sector partners are collaborating with every level of government to deliver on results for the region. So thank you to the Greater Baltimore Committee for your leadership in bringing us together today. Thank you to this group for making the time to be part of Select USA in this conversation today about investing in the Baltimore region to come see the incredible work that is happening here. And thank you to the people of Baltimore for showing us what it means to be Maryland tough and Baltimore strong. As the president said, Baltimore can count on us to stick with you every step of the way. We will continue to have your back until the bridge is rebuilt and beyond. Thank you so very much for your time. Thank you for being here in Baltimore and have a wonderful day.